The Desert Island Disco. And it's time to take a trip. I am thrilled to say that our Desert Island Disco castaway today is DJ Zinc, who's here to celebrate drum and bass with us on the line. Hello, Ben. How are you doing today? You all right? Good morning, Lauren. I'm very well, thanks. I would say 9.5 out of 10. <laughs> Oh, I'm yes. Use a number based system to measure my well being. That's about right. Yeah, that sounds yeah. right. It's a good metric, as good a metric as any. Um, yeah. But thank you for making time to sit, talk to us on this very busy day. You've got a new single, Conditioning, which is out today on Bingo Base from a new compilation yeah. that you've done, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah. So uh, I, I make, in the last sort of a decade, I've made not only drum and bass, but also house and breaks. Well, actually, about in the last 20 years, actually. 20 years ago, I started making breakbeat as well as drum and bass. Right. And so the compilation that is out, that's coming out, is uh, sort of house with bass stuff. So I do that, but the last track I released was a drum and bass track. So I'm kind of a multi-genre dude. Exactly. Well, and this is perfect and pertains to Desert Island Disco, really. So this is one of the things that I wanted to ask, because I think when it comes to drum and bass, it's interesting how the genre has massively broken through the mainstream and influenced the mainstream. I mean, the music's DNA is kind of everywhere, you know, even places you wouldn't expect it. But it also remains a scene that is, you know, at its heart, it's about alternative culture. It's it's kind of underground. How do you look back on it and, and look at its kind of current form now? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was always a satellite scene, drum and bass. It was always because if you play techno or you played house or you played tech house, those are the same sort of BPM, so you could mix it up a bit. Yeah. Whereas with drum and bass, it was just out on its own. So it, it, would, it was a satellite scene. It was a really, it was an alternative thing. And um, I loved it, you know, from, I was interested in it from before, before it even existed in the sort of acid house. I followed it all the way through. Um, so I think I guess it was inevitable that it would become part of the um, the the kind of mixture of what is in pop music, just because people are so used to it. Yeah. Um, but in the old days, it would there would be a jungle or drum and bass mix of a track, but it would be like an oddity. It wouldn't be the the main uh, track wouldn't be real drum and bass. Whereas now there's some like authentic drum and bass you know that, that is played in daytime radio so. well and we're going to hear some now aren't we um how was it putting your tracks together <laughs> <laughs> well you know your producer said to me don't forget it's going to be on 9 a.m in the morning and so please can you make it appropriate you know don't go too crazy and so i thought i've got two choices i can either yeah pay attention to her suggestion and do like five or six <laughs> really nice mellow tracks and keep it very breakfast uh, radio, or I could completely ignore what she said Please tell and make me. it exactly Please. what I would want to hear Please as tell a drum and head. Please tell me it's yeah. B. <laughs> yeah, so it's so so you can probably guess from the way I'm framing it that I chose to make it exactly what I would want to hear as a jungle head, as a drum and bass head. It's like exactly the sort of music because I think that some people hear drum and bass, they hear the stuff that's in the charts, and they they don't. You know, that's the tip of the iceberg. But if you went to a rave, but like yesterday I was in King's Cross where Bagley's used to be. Oh. And that all through the 90s, that was a massive drum and bass venue. And I miss that roller rink. So, yeah, and so, yeah, uh, yeah well, there's a, there was the, and there was Volvo Express in North London, all these like iconic venues. And the music that got played in those venues, that was the drum and bass that I was into. So it's like really like raw, full on, loud, crazy music. And so I, so with this mix, I basically went for, choice B and uh, so yeah and so you know I was looking through like who, who are the real icons for me that the biggest uh, producers in drum and bass so I right. put stuff on there from people like Andy C Ronnie Size Dillinger Marcus Intellect Shy Sex Calibre Bad Company and like, labels like Moving Shadow Sub Bass that were really the cornerstones of drum and bass back in the 90s Ben let's so, get um, stuck in this yeah. is absolutely tremendous thank you so much for You're um, welcome. going absolutely on the correct brief which was yours love you thank <laughs> you Cheers. DJ Zing, you're, you're off to the Desert Island Disco. Let's go. <laughs> Six. Desert Island Disco. Six. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh my gosh. The intro of this thing rinsing out the place. Sing, come cross. On fire tonight. As the wheel come again, reaching out to all the mess of never catch it the first time. I'm gonna 
the catch of the first try.
incredible before we go any further. Hear what now? Special announcement. For anybody who's parked their car outside, you better go and move it or you're walking home, no matter where you come from. You best go and move it or you're walking home for real. Right. Sing back to the music. Sing, 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 sing.
What a mix. DJ Zinks, drum and bass, Desert Island Disco. Known for jumping effortlessly between musical genres, one of the few artists who can claim to have had genuine underground and commercial hits across house, breakbeat, UK garage and drum and bass. Really fantastic to share his favourite drum and bass tracks with you today. Thank you very much to Ben, a.k.a. DJ Zinc, for sharing this Desert Island Disco with us. The reaction to it has been massive.